so Stacey Patton. I am a hospitality leader at DLR Group. I lead our hospitality interior staff primarily for uh, kind of three offices, Kansas City, Chicago, and Minneapolis. And DLR Group is a national, actually global firm. And uh, we do a lot of different sectors, work in a lot of different areas, but I focus on hospitality. So amazing. amazing. So obviously, Stacey, uh, the world has shifted quite a bit in the last couple of weeks. How's the shift of like everything going on happening? Like, yeah. how's it going for the firm? And like, what are you kind of seeing from the hospitality side? Because obviously, yeah. the hospitality world especially is uh, taking a hit right now. So tell us from your yeah. perspective what, what you're seeing. Yeah, um, you know, it's, it's been tough. I, I think that for some of us, hospitality feels like it's really just kind of hit a, a brick wall. Um, mm -hmm. and, I, and I think it's really happened uh, pretty rapidly, like literally within the last two to three weeks. Yeah, that's uh, the crazy part. Yeah, and I'm, I'm a little blasted out with that light. But, there you um, go. I know it's hard to find the right angles. Too. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. I'll that's better. I'll that's better. Wait, 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 wait. I call it an angel glow, Stacey. You had an angel glow going. <laughs> <play. laughs> um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been very uh, challenging. I think it's literally kind of felt like a um, emotional roller coaster because it, yeah. the first onset, I think we were all really optimistic, like, hey, this is, this is, you know, not necessarily going to affect maybe us too much. Mm -hmm. And then rapidly over the last couple of weeks, it has been um, very difficult. I think we've mm -hmm. been getting calls pretty daily and talking to our, our clients and understanding where they're coming from. And um, which is a, and so their calls have, yeah. have, have adjusted our ability to project work and understand what work is going to remain and move forward. So yeah, it, it's, it's been crazy. I mean, it's yeah. been wild. And I don't know, I don't know how else to take it other than day by day. Uh, okay. I mean, I know you're talking with a lot of great people in the industry and I'm sure they're yeah. all feeling the same. I feel like everyone, yeah, feels the same. I feel like um, it's been interesting to hear what sectors are doing better than others. And, you know, it's kind of case by case though, because we did hear of a firm, I won't say which firm or what city, but one firm actually got a new hotel project this week because they said no one's in the hotels. So they're like able to renovate and do a lot of things they wouldn't have been able to otherwise. Right. Obviously you have to have the capital. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> happen. Um, but that's why I was curious to talk to you in general, as a general overview. Um, have you felt like a lot of your projects are on hold or are they moving forward? I know it's case by case, but anything, yeah. any insight for the hospitality field? Yeah, I, I, I do think you're right. I mean, we're, we're, quickly becoming um, very similar to a lot of our partners in the industry where, you know, I would say for us, it's about half. Okay. Uh, maybe even a little bit more like 60%. We're still moving forward. Okay. Uh, the other is really pa like pausing Fast. or um, maybe just shifting out a couple months, but um, it is, it is very intriguing. I think what, and listen, I'm not like a financial expert. <laughs> Me, me. Um, Don't ask me any specific questions. I'll be like, what? <laughs> yeah, my boss knows I hate spreadsheets and, and all that stuff. But I will say what we've noticed is the groups that are well capitalized. So the groups that, um, you know, maybe they didn't really need a loan because they have private investors. A lot of their work is continuing. Okay. And that's actually really kind of the cool thing that comes out of this is if you are well capitalized, you're able to weather the storm. Mm -hmm. um, but we've had, you know, some of our projects that are maybe they were planned for like a year out to be opened. Those are really getting kind of thawed or frozen because they're, re they're really not sure if the legitimacy of that revenue when they get open right. is there. Right. And so it's kind of making them rethink if they should continue with, um, the project, and especially if it's kind of like you're about to finish construction documents, it's not really been um, permitted yet. It's, mm -hmm. you know, there's no shovels in the ground. I think that is giving a lot yeah. of owners some hesitancy to, to move those along. So it kind of depends where you're at in the phase of design then really? I think it does. Okay. We've got another project that's 
full blown under renovation and they're about to finish in a couple weeks. And, um, you know, for them, they have to get it done, but unfortunately there likely won't be anyone staying in the hotel, but mm -hmm. they're staying on task. They're going to get it done. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we have some other projects that are two years out that those owners are not phased at all. Right. You know, they're like, they're it's so long anyway. So that's kind of yeah. nice. Yeah. And, and so, I mean, fortunately for us, we've through our business development, been able to capture a lot of great clients uh, on a variety of different angles, whether they're big national groups or smaller groups. So we have a lot of diversity in our mm -hmm. client base that is helping us right now. And it really you know, nice. goes out to some that that maybe no have um, quite the diversity and client base because I do see that the smaller groups, the smaller boutique groups or um, developers who are doing uh, things on a smaller scale have really yeah. had to just stop. Yeah, yeah that's the hard part. Um, so you you were in the industry 2008 to 2012, right? <laughs> yeah. You know what's really funny? It's like I graduated 2009, but some of our next geners, they weren't even like, <laughs> they weren't even out of school yet. They yeah. hadn't gone through this like we did. Um, what kind of differences are you seeing compared to 2008 to 2012 in the industry to now? I'm seeing a ton of differences already. I know it's only been like three weeks or whatever, but um, I'm seeing a lot of differences. Are you seeing any really positive, good differences between then and now? Yeah, it was funny. I was thinking about the last time you and I chatted and I was telling you about my story. Yeah. 2008. And I was like, this yeah. is so weird that we're talking again. <laughs> <laughs> it's not our fault. <laughs> not, that one, not our fault. <laughs> um, so it's, I would say I'm trying to find the positive right now. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, you know, my colleague this morning was even saying that, you know, in 2008, 2009, 2010, it was such a slow trickle and it was devastating. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. it was a slower time period. And this virus is just like, bam, like yeah. it hitting hard. And you almost like you're literally making decisions day by day. Totally. A hundred percent. And so I'm, I, I don't know, you know, I think the positives are that um, we're obviously taking it serious. I think mm -hmm. our community is taking it serious. We see how it's impacting our partners who have hotels, run hotels. Um, and, and so we, I'm, I'm really proud of the industry for taking it seriously because it is. Mm -hmm. um, but I think there's a, it's going to get worse before it gets better. Yeah. yeah. And so I think the positives will likely reveal themselves in time. Um, yeah. One I was, positive thing I heard was that, yeah. you know, some people might really want to start accelerating renovations during this okay. downtime because they won't have to displace guests. So that's yeah. kind of, you know. That's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> I think one positive that we're hearing, so we've um, had calls with New York, a bunch of different calls with New York designers, uh, Dallas, yeah. Atlanta, and Chicago. So I have, those are my people yeah. I'm working with right now. But one positive thing is they're saying firms are being super transparent which yeah. I think is a huge difference from what I heard about 2008 to 2012. Like firms yeah. are really having kind of like community talks. They're talking to the entire firm. They're telling everyone everything and being yeah. super transparent with their books and the financial situation, the loans they're going after, like yeah. all of that. And I feel like to me, I don't know if you can attest that that seems different to me that they're willing to be transparent and they want everyone to know we're in this together and here's yeah. what we're doing to try to like save you and, and keep you working, which I think is great. Yeah, I agree. I, I think you're totally right. And um, I mean, just, I think that's just evident even in, in this week, you know, BLLA did a, a WebEx, HD uh, Mag did a, a WebEx with leaders in the industry. Uh, you're doing this. I mean, the work that you're doing. Yeah. Um, it's really cool that we are kind of putting the competitiveness to the side and saying, how can we all kind of understand how to go through this together? together. Um, I think that's really neat. And I, yeah. maybe, maybe to your point, that is the positive that will come yeah. out of it. That will totally. be a, a, a much more connected community and kind of put the, the competitiveness to the side and just share totally. about how do we stay, how do we together keep this industry afloat? Yeah. Because I think many of us don't 
you know, we've come to that sort of maturity in our career that we don't really want to do certain project types and we kind of love hospitality. Mm -hmm. So I see that's a huge, a huge game changers, just the willingness to share information. Totally. Really. And be that together. Yeah. yeah. What about the hospitality industry? Because you've been in it for a long time now. Like, uh, yeah. do you think there's going to be any shifts after this based on, I mean, guests and like, I, we just talked to someone who was doing a, a cruise ship and they were talking about how they're now stripping all of the materials and like, it's really changing how they're working and different isolation areas and things like that. Do you think uh, hospitality will have any, any shifts after this COVID situation? Yeah, I think it will. Um, I mean, like hospitality was already trending to embrace germaphobes. <laughs> Like, Thank no you. More yeah. As a frequent hotel person. Thank you. <laughs> right? And it was like, no more carpet. We need, you know, hard surface. No one wants grout lines in the showers. We need. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so I think it's going to continue to propel some of those concepts as it relates to cleanliness and, um, that, and, and even like, um, check-in or check-out or room service, just all these things that may start to trend towards being very touchless. Like elevators and like, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So more touchless type environments and experiences. Yeah. And, and I think like, um, I think in terms of, okay, so like you and I are having a, a conversation virtually. Yeah. And, um, maybe there's some aspect of this that will translate into how you engage with your guests before they even arrive to the hotel. Mm -hmm. um, that could be very interesting to maybe do a, a quick, you know, interview with your guests so that when they arrive, like everything that they would want personal is personalized to them is there. Maybe that would be kind yeah. of a cool thing. That's cool. Um, but I, I do see for the hospitality industry who loves travel, and we love to meet, um, you know, I've done two charrettes with Marriott in just the last two weeks and okay. it was three hour phone calls, but we did it. We, we made it through and it, we didn't need to travel. Okay. So, and it was fine. And did you feel like the experience yeah. was pretty similar? It was like, it made it work. You know, I mean, of course, as designers, like we love to touch materials and like feed off of people's energy in the room. So that was uh, something that I wish could have happened, but, yeah. Yeah. but overall we still met the objectives of what we needed. We, you know, photograph, um, we, we, we did what we could given the circumstances. Mm -hmm. And I think I could see that becoming more, um, more frequent as we come back to allow when you really need to travel, you can travel. But yeah. if it, if it's not, epically necessary, then, you know, let's do a WebEx and, and yeah. kind of save from. the resources. I love that. Okay. All right, Stacy. So at the end here, um, what is something weird that you've been doing during quarantine? Oh, weird. <laughs> it doesn't have to be super weird. I mean, a lot of people have said funny things, but is there anything you've been doing that's <laughs> kind of just like weird, different, not your usual during quarantine? Um, Cause you're quarantining. Where, where are you quarantining in Chicago? So yeah, so I'm not in Chicago. I'm uh, planted in Minneapolis with my daughter and her okay. school and everything. Um, the weird Are you guys thing? downtown Minneapolis or are you yeah. in one of the suburbs? Downtown, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, we're downtown. So our office uh, has been pretty empty really for several weeks because everybody decided to work from home. But yeah. um, I don't know. I Maybe not weird, but... Um, you know, just, I think playing with my daughter, there's, there's so much of this that's helping me reconnect back to my daughter. And, totally. um, you know, so I don't know if I call that weird. I mean, it's definitely weird to be in your PJs on a Zoom. <laughs> You're like, messed up. I mean, that's weird. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But you know what though? Like, I think a lot of parents who travel frequently for work have said that that's one of their silver linings is like, yeah adjusting to, but also having that extra time that you might not, you wouldn't have had otherwise because you'd be traveling. So that's kind of cool. I love yeah. it. Have you done any like forts or like puzzles or anything? Yes. So, um, oh, so my daughter, Olivia kind of hates puzzles and I think it's because <laughs> it requires patience. Um, yeah. yeah. But, um, no, I mean like daily there's a fort and of course I got to get it up with her. 
um, it, it's really, it's really been nice to, I actually have been really enjoying just not the, the crazy pace, you know, I'm not yeah. on airplanes, I'm not in cabs, I'm not in, you know, running here, running there. And I, I have in fact felt quite more well. Yeah. <laughs> so, there you go. so, you know, there are some good things that are coming from this and I think just stretching and, and you know, doing much more yoga during the day, even yeah. if it's like minutes of stretching. So makes a difference. I'm telling Very you, I, fun too. my body's feeling better from not traveling too. Actually, it's like been helping yeah. when people can travel again as a hospitality expert, Stacy, where's mm -hmm. like one of your favorite places that you recommend people travel? That's how we'll kind of end. Oh, so I have a great answer for this. Maybe not everyone's answer, but, um, I feel like this experience is probably going to bring back a love for domestic travel yep. for um i i think the the uh, you know accessibility to global travel and rates and just sort of affluence everyone's career has allowed them to maybe obtain that i see a big upswing for just domestic locations and okay. like new places to go like have you ever thought about going to chattanooga yeah or, you know like um Kierland or, you know, some places in sort of near urban markets that you're kind of like, hey, let's check this out. And so I think that will probably be something people think about so that they're not so far away from home. Mm -hmm. And you, it's kind of cool to just see America, I think. Totally. There's so many places. I always feel like I'm traveling a lot, but I'm like, I, there's so many more places on my list. I'm like ready to do it. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, any closing thoughts you want to leave for, for the next Jenners or then anyone watching? Yeah, I, I think just the last little advice I'd give, and you know, you and I talked a little bit about this with my prior experience. That uh, now more Your than podcast, which everyone should listen to, which was really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Um, I think now more than ever is the time to just say, for the next couple months, I may not be doing exactly what I want, but I'm just going to do what I need to do to survive. And if that means you're staying home and taking care of your family, cool. If that means you're working on different project types that you've never really worked on, cool. It's really a time to just be very open-minded and kind of just take it as it comes because none of us have a crystal ball. So just nope. go with it. A hundred percent agree. All right. One day at a time, Stacey, we got this. All right. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? A little wine helps sometimes. So I'm going to enjoy this wine. <laughs> right? I was going to say, I know we had to cheers. <laughs> All right. We made it. All right. I'll talk to you soon, Stacey. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Talk to you later. Thank you. Talk to you later. Bye.